the researcher has certain objectives for his or her research. Using these objectives or research question, the researcher may have stated hypothesis or sometimes there may not be any hypothesis. In order to achieve those objectives or to test the hypothesis, the researcher needs data. There are many data collection tools, but basically we must understand what are the methods of data collection. We have been seeing different types of tools under quantitative research methodology as well as qualitative research methodology. In quantitative research methodology, there could be some tools. The basic idea is to quantify the responses of the respondents. Some of the tools can also be used in both ways, both types of research methodologies. For example, interview is a tool or a technique which can be used for quantifiability. It can be used under quantitative research method and it also can be used under qualitative research methods. Let us see what makes an interview a quantitative tool as well as a qualitative tool. Interview is a technique and for conducting interview, we need to prepare interview guide which can be used by the interviewer. So when we are thinking of interviewing something, there are two parties. One is interviewer and other is interviewee or in our case, that person can, can also be called as respondent. Now the researcher or the interviewer is interested in finding out what is the opinion of that respondent? What is there in his or her mind? How do they think on a particular issue or a particular aspect? And during this process of interviewing, all these opinions, thought processes, ideas, opinions of the respondents are brought out by the interviewer. And that is why interviewing is an art. Interviews are also used to gather information about individual's experiences, individual's knowledge, individual's opinions and then because they matter to the researcher. And these opinions can be quantified or they also can be used as qualitative data. The beauty of an interview is it can be used to understand what happened in the past, what, ha what is happening today, that is the status and it also can be used to understand what will happen in future. So interview can be used for understanding all three stages of any particular process, event, a product or anything. Now that we know that interview is conducted by an interviewer and answers are given by the interviewee or the respondent. Based on what kind of interviews are conducted, they can be classified in a variety of manner. One of the aspects of the criterion which we can use is its structuredness. If it is very structured, we call it a structured interview. On the other extreme, it is not structured at all. The interviewer asks questions, whatever are emerging due to discussion. This is called unstructured interview. And there is in between, it is not too informal, it is not formal. There is a structure to some extent and the interviewer also has the freedom to ask questions as per his or her you know, experience. Then that is called semi-structured. So using the structure as a criterion, we can have three types of interview, structured interview, semi-structured interview and unstructured interview. We will see in detail how these different types of interviews are conducted and what are their characteristics. Other classification also can be done using purpose. As you know, the newspapers, they come and interview us. So those are called press interviews. There could be therapeutic interviews where the doctors or the psychologists or the psychiatrists interview their patients. There can be interview for employment. So your prospective employer interviews prospective employee. These are the interviews specially conducted for the employment purpose. There can be interviews making requests or stating demands. 
we want to demand something and then we also interview at that time. Basically, the purpose of the research is researcher is to get information pertaining to the kind of objectives or the hypothesis which the researcher has put forward. Based on the administration of an interview, how the interview is conducted, they can be classified as individual interview, group interview as well as team interview. We will be seeing the characteristic of each of these and purposes of each of these a little later. Let us see the interviews which are classified as per their structure. We have seen that there are three types of interviews as per structure. There is a structured interview, then semi-structured interviews and unstructured interviews. Let us see structured interviews. The name itself tells you that it is very structured. Which questions to ask, how to ask, in what way to ask, everything is predetermined. The researcher while preparing the research guide, interview guide or interview schedule has already determined the sequence of the questions and also sometimes how you should ask the questions. That is also predetermined, so it is very structured. This also means that if you are interviewing say 10 or 15 people, the same manner, same sequence, same tone is used for all 10. The structure is observed for all interviewee, all respondents by the interviewer. The name says it is structured, so naturally the interviewer has no freedom to change the sequence, to add his or her own words, to interpret it differently, no. They cannot do anything there, they have to interview in a way they are asked to interview. Very structured, very rigid because there is a certain purpose, they want the answers, the data in a particular manner. So if you change the sequence, maybe the answers are different. So in order to get the same kind of a data from all the respondents, sometimes the researcher thinks of using structured interview. One of the beauty of the interview is that the interviewer first of all has to create a rapport between him or her and the respondent. If you go to a person and start bombarding questions, nobody is going to answer it to you. So you have to create a milieu, you have to create an environment where the, the respondent will feel free to answer your questions. Now your interview is very structured, you are going to ask the same question in same tone, in the same sequence, with the same words, that's why it becomes a little challenging for the interviewer to create a rapport, he or she has to create a rapport. That means more efforts are required to create the rapport first between the interviewer and the respondent. This is a challenge. Because this is a structured interview, we expect structured answers and naturally there would be alternatives. Because if you start asking them open-ended questions and they start giving you something else, then again the interview will become either semi-structured or unstructured. So the structured interview has definite questions and maybe yes or no type of answers or you may give them alternatives. When you ask them, do you see television, the answers should be given yes or no. So it is structured. If they say yes, then you are interested to know how often do they see television. So how often is a question which can be answered in many different ways. So in a structured interview, the alternatives are also given, once in a week, twice in a week, thrice in a week, more than four days in a week or every day. So it is very structured and the respondent has to answer only one of these. Now because this is structured, there is no room for going into the details and asking them further questions because the interviewer is not supposed to add anything based on their answers. So naturally in depth interviews are not conducted, further information is not sought. That's why maybe more superficial information can be sought using very structured interviews. Let us see one example of structured interview, how it looks. See how these questions are framed, in which grade does your child study? So that parent is expected to give 8th standard, 9th standard, whatever. Do you help your child in his or her studies? 
Now, answer is yes or no. Now, if yes, how often? Again, alternatives are given daily, once or twice a week or irregularly. The next question, does your spouse help him or her in studies? It is structured and the answer is either yes or no. If yes, how often? Again, alternatives are given daily, once or twice a week or irregularly. Do you think you are equipped to help your child in studies? Yes or no? But here the respondent is only saying, yes, I think that I am confident enough or I am not confident, that's all. But in-depth analysis, in-depth questions also can be asked further, which is not possible in structured interviews. Now, one more question is there, which is already saying, if the answer is no, do you feel the need for additional training in assisting children in their studies? Again, the answer is yes or no. It is a forced choice. Please understand, because it is a structured interview, the interviewer is forcing the respondent to select the response from given list. If the respondent says, my answer is different, so that different answer can be listed, can be stated. But interviewer is not expected to go in depth and ask more questions because the interview is called a structured interview. Based on the structure, the next type of interview is called semi-structured interview. The name indicates that it is not very structured, but it is also not unstructured, it is semi. That means there is a structuredness, but we are trying to bring in unstructuredness as well. So in this type of interview, first the structured questions are asked, Based on the answers, responses of the respondent, more probing questions are asked so that more information can be collected. This type of interview gives you an advantage that you can have, the first question is a structured question. So, you are asking the respondent to give you the answer of that. But then you are probing, more information can be sought which can be very valuable which helps the researcher to test the hypothesis or achieve the objectives in an appropriate manner. This probing also brings out the reasons for saying so. We have seen in previous example of structured interview, these reasons, why do they think so, what would happen, these kind of questions are not asked because they are not structured. You cannot think beforehand what would be probable answers. There can be 1000 different answers. Here in semi-structure, to some extent this is possible. The reasons behind this thought process can be explored by using some probing questions. So the semi-structured interviews provides you both objectivity, also in-depth understanding of the reasons or thought process behind the thing. Let us see one example of semi-structured interview. See the first question, since last September, have you helped so and so at home with English or other subjects? We are talking about their children, a child. You take a name there and since last September, have you helped them? The answers could be yes, often or could be yes, occasionally or no or hardly ever. Now the interviewer is probing further. If yes, what sort of things do you do? These questions are asked to mother, these questions are also asked to father. Probing question is, how does, now the child's name feels about it? Do you see a difference between structured and semi-structured interview? We started with structured question. Now we are probing further to get more information from the respondent. If the answer is no, the answer was no hardly ever, so the interviewer can probe further by saying, why is this? Why you are not able to do this? So now again the reasoning comes out. This is a probing question and this gives you unstructured information because every parent may give, may come out with different answers. That needs to be coded again. The third type of interview based on the structure is unstructured interview. 
the name suggests that it is not structured. Of course, does not, it is not structured means, does it mean that you just go in somebody's room and start asking bombarding questions? No. The researcher has thought about it. Tentatively, a plan is prepared. What do we want? What kind of information is required? You are talking about women leaders. What is their leadership style? How do they take decisions? How do they work on the data which is supplement, so given to them? How do they play a role of manager? How do they give directions? So basic idea ideas are listed. But if you ask structured questions to a leader for understanding the leadership, what you will get is bare information, which you don't want. Here, the researcher is interested in understanding the whole thought process, the gamut of information, the processes, the decision making, many things. And this also brings out the way women leaders think. For this, structured or semi-structured interviews will not be useful. Their unstructured interviews, more informal interview, talking to a person, bringing out things, creating a very good rapport so that the respondent feels at home. All these things matter in unstructured interview. Here, there's, you have selected 10 or 15 leaders. If you use unstructured interview style, then the questions which come up for everyone may be different because based on their way of thinking, their way of processing information, the questions may change. So here, the interviewer has the freedom to add, to ask questions in a different manner, in different sequence, to frame new questions based on the responses which he or she gets from the respondent. That freedom is available in unstructured interview. Unstructured interviews, you have seen that a lot of freedom is there. So it is very difficult, it is very challenging to quantify it because every respondent will come out with different reasoning, different experiences and it is very difficult to code. So naturally, the quantitative methods of research do not use or very rarely use unstructured interviews. Unstructured interviews are mostly or majorly used in qualitative research methods and based on their unstructuredness, they are further classified into focus group interviews and in-depth interviews. These were the interviews classified on the basis of their structuredness. We also said that interviews also can be classified on the basis of administration process. Who is administering, how it is administered. So based on that, we said there are three types of interviews, individual interviews, group interviews, as well as team interviews. Let us see each one of them in detail. Let us see the first type of interview called individual interview. The name suggests that individual person is being interviewed and there is also a single interviewer. So one person interviewing and one person responding. This is called individual interview. This interview is conducted when you want to maintain a confidentiality because whatever answers are given, they are given in strict confidence. So if you have other people there, the person may not be able to say that. So when you want to establish confidentiality, that time individual interviews are conducted. This also gives you an opportunity to ask in-depth questions because the individual is sitting next to you and there is a there is more informal rapport created. So in-depth questions also can be asked when individual interviews are conducted. Sometimes it happens that questions are uh, involving more sensitive answers. So if these type of questions are asked, it is better that they are asked to a one person who answers to a one to one interviewer. So like confidentiality, sensitive issues, which people may not think that it should be known because generally when we collect data, we promise the respondents that your opinions, your responses will be kept strictly confidential. We don't put their names on it. So it is always better that individual interviews are conducted when some sensitive issues are discussed. One of the limitation of interviews 
when we conduct individually, there, because you have to conduct individual interviews, it is more time consuming. If you have to interview 50 people, then you will require 50 hours if you take one hour for each individual. So it is time consuming. The researcher has to really balance whether they want information which is very rich or whether they can compromise for, for the time. The next type of interview is called the group interview. As the name suggests, it is conducted for the whole group. But it is conducted by one interviewer and there can be many more respondents sitting together. When you are talking to a class and interviewing them about various practices used by the teachers or by the schools for their particular class, there is no need for interviewing each person, all 43 students separately. You can ask such questions to the whole group. So this is called a group interview where one person, one interviewer is asking questions to the whole group, a cohort. It also is possible that though this group has similar experience on a particular issue, they may have varied views on other aspects. So when you are talking to a whole group, some people may say this, some people may say that. So all the things are recorded, not by name, but all these responses are recorded by the interviewer, which gives him or her a very rich data at a point of time. Because he or she doesn't have to go to 43 people, together they are answering one by one, of course. So, but in a, in a group, they are answering all these questions. Naturally, one of the advantages is that you are saving on your time. But the disadvantage is that in a group of 43, only 10 people are speaking and you are losing on information from remaining people. There are some people in a group who may feel shy, who may not be so confident in expressing themselves in a whole large group. So again, if you compare this, the next type of interview is called interviews would prove better because there it is one to one interaction and people feel because you are promising them about confidentiality, people would come out with their opinions and experiences in full confidence. The third type of interview is called team interview. It is a team of interviewers. So we are talking about more than one interviewers. So there can be two, there can be three and they are interviewing one person or a group of person. That is possible. Whom they are interviewing is immaterial, but who are interviewing is a team. What happens here when the person speaks, the interviewer also has certain biases. So he or she may note down the things which are more applicable or more near to his or her thought process and may ignore some others. What happens with more than one interviewer? Both of them are jotting down whatever is said. Interview is a very subjective process. So you are asking questions and interviewee is coming out with his or her experiences. So while explaining that, the interviewers also have this subjective element in them. So while noting down the observation, noting down what they are saying, there may be a bias. If you have more than one interviewers, this bias can be minimized, it can be reduced. It is also possible that one person asks question and other person notes down. So that one person fully concentrates on which questions to ask, whereas the other person notes down all the answers because he or she doesn't have to divide attention in asking questions. This is also possible while we are engaging in team interview. We discussed about different types of interviews. These types are according to their structuredness as well as how do we administer it. There are many other aspects of interview which a researcher must know so that he or she can prepare good interview guide or schedule and also interview the respondents in profitable manner. We will see that in the next session.